Hey masters, today I wanted to show you a very interesting example of how you can use test variables, project variables, and environment variables. Also, at the end, we're gonna see how to use the package.env and how you can manage your configuration file to use it perfectly in sync and without any kind of issue. So let's go ahead and take a look of how this works. Okay, masters, we're gonna use this to do application. My idea is to show you how to send parameters with this example. Here we have a to-do application and I can enter different values. I'll be using users. So I'm gonna enter user one and here it is. I wanna make the validation that this parameter actually was typed into the to-do to application and then we have the value here as a to-do. That's my parameter. And I wanna show you different approaches of how to use parameters using this very simple example. Then you can use this information for other use cases in real life, okay? Let's take a look of how this works. Okay, masters, let me give you the wall, the, the context of what is going on here. I'm gonna have a, a user, users array here named users, okay? Inside of this array, we're gonna have a couple of strings. The first one is user one, and the second value is user two. So I'm gonna be using a for loop to iterate over that array, right? And we're gonna have and one iteration for one user, which is user one, and then another iteration for user two. We are, well, I think that it is clear and we have no way to get lost here, okay? Then I'm gonna create a new test per every single parameter that I have in the array, okay? So this test name is gonna be testing using parameter. And if it is the first sign of the iteration, it's gonna be user one because this is the value of the current user. And if it is iterating over the second value, user two, we're gonna have a different test with a different name, okay? That's understandable. Then inside of every single test here, I'm gonna be making actions and one assertion. The first action is gonna be filling the to-do input like this one, let me show you this. Oh, uh, nope, this is not, okay? So it is gonna come here to this element and it is gonna fill or type with the value user one, if it is the first iteration or user two, if it is the second iteration. Okay, that's beautiful. All right, given that, then I'm gonna make sure that the playwright framework is gonna be pressing enter once I have entered the value here, because if I don't press enter, we're not gonna have a new to do in the to do application. So I'm making the both actions to make sure that everything is working fine. Okay, that's beautiful. And then I'm gonna make an assertion to make sure that this value over here that has this particular uh, data test ID to do title. So I'm getting that particular element in the DOM. And I want to make sure that it has a text, well, user one, depending on the loop iteration or user two. So let me show you that this is working. And this is how I'm using parameters in test level, okay? I'm just using like a simple array or this simple test data set, and I'm making a, a for loop to iterate over the two users that I have in this array, okay? Let me show you this is, this is working for you guys, okay? Uh, I also wanted to show you guys that I have in my playwright.config.js a couple of projects. So I have Chromium and I have Firefox, okay? So I'm gonna have both iterations for every single test that I create, okay? So let me show you this in my playwright uh, test runner, okay? So here, you're gonna see that under the parameters.spec.js, which is the file that I have for this particular video, okay? Parameters.spec.js, I have a couple of tests here. I have the testing using parameter user one, because it is the first iteration of this four. And then I have testing using parameter user two. And you can see that I have Chromium and Firefox uh, execution per each. How you can open this UI? It is as simple as, as using mpx playwright test dash dash UI, okay? So it is gonna open the test runner here. Let me show you this, and this is it, okay? So as, as I was telling you, under this particular test, we're gonna have an execution of Chromium and Firefox. So if I run this, okay? You're gonna see the execution of Chromium and Firefox, and if I check inside, you can see that the first test is checking the user one, and the and the, the second test using Firefox is using user one as well. And if I check the second test here, it is the same um, the same logic. Let me show you this. 
but now it is using user2. So we're using like an array to generate two test cases with that similar information, right? So I just wanted to give you this, this, this particular example for your future tasks where you can see this a, like an applicable concept for your tests, right? Let's continue guys with the next example, which is using parameters from project. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, masters, this is a very interesting one. How you can use like project parameters. This is very interesting, okay? So I'm gonna open here my playwright.config.js or TS if you're using it. And I'm gonna get back to the projects configuration here, okay? As I told you, we're gonna be executing our tests in two different projects using Chromium because this is the device that I'm using here, devices, desktop Chrome. And then I'll be using Firefox as well, because that's the device that I'm defining here in the use property of every single project. Okay. I think it's clear, but then you can see that after the devices, I have created a property named user. Okay. That's interesting. And this user and inside of this user property, I set the string value of user one for Chromium and user two for Firefox. Okay. So when I run Chromium, we're going to have access to user one. And when I run Firefox, I'll be having access to user two as the value of the variable user. I think that you get the idea, right? Now I'm going to get back to parameters.spec.js and I'll be calling that value of user under projects, use and user. Okay. So as you can see, what I'm going to be doing here is declaring a constant named user from project. And I'll be getting the, inf the value from test info that I have called from this particular uh, variable in the after the page fixture over here. So this test info is the name that I give that I gave. Actually, you can name this with the name that you want. And then I'll be accessing the project that I have in my in my configuration, okay, project that use because that's the name of this property, and then I'll be accessing the user property that I have created over here, okay. So I have created just simple a simple test over here that is using that particular variable. So testing using parameter from project. So if I'm using Chromium. I'll be using user one for the testing. And if I run Firefox, I'll be using user two for the testing. So when I run this, well, I'll be using the same structure that I explained to you before. I'll be typing the new to do from, from the user or, or the user in the to do application. Then I'm going to press enter. And then I want to make sure that the to do was inserted in the application. Okay. So I'm going to go back to here and I want to show you that this is working. This is the project. Let me show you this test testing using parameter from project. I'm going to run it and you can see a couple of executions here, one for Chromium and one for Firefox. That's correct. And if I check back again, the playwright.config.js, the project Chromium should use the user user one. Okay. So I'm going to open it for you and you can see that it is using user one. Beautiful, right? And then if I check Firefox, it should use user two. Let me show you that user two. And that's how you can use project variables in your tests if you need it. Okay. Obviously this is a kind of dummy example, but you can use this knowledge to apply and use it in different ways. It's beautiful. Let's continue guys with how to use environment variables, because that's another interesting way to a well or something that you may need in the future okay let's go ahead and take a look all right masters um let me show you this example okay i don't want to use now um like an array in my in my same test and i don't want to use project variables anymore as well okay i'm gonna be using like an environment variable that i can set in the terminal like this one okay i'm gonna cancel this execution let me clear this it is cls i think okay and you can see that I'm using CMD here because I'm using Windows, okay? And for Windows to set an environment variable, I have to use this syntax over here. Set, then the name of the environment variable, and then you can equal the value that you want to assign to it, okay? So I'm going to press Enter. 
Now this var variable has a value of me. Okay. So what is going to happen in this test? If I open this test, you can see that I have created a constant named user. And this user is going to get the value from process.env.var, which is the name of the variable that I created. So this user is going to have the value of me, basically. And then when I execute this, we're going to have like a test using this value of me in the to-do application. So I'm going to run again the the test runner in playwright. Okay, let me show you this. And I'll be looking for the test, testing using environment variables. Okay, so it is going to run and hopefully you can see that it is using me as the value for the to do test. Okay, so you can see guys how you can also use environment variables uh, in playwright in a pretty simple way, just calling the, the process that env and then just the variable that you want. But now you may be thinking you, uh, or may we may have like a lot of environment variables that I wanna have in secret, right? And we don't want to version in, in the repository or something else. So I want to show you guys how to use the package.env and how to have like a .env file where you can have like different environment variables. So let me show. Okay, masters, let me show you how you can create an, uh, a file like this one, .env, and how you can load environment variables from this file in your project. It's going to be pretty easy, okay? So the first thing that you have to do is in this code as well. I have all the steps for you. The first thing that you have to do is install this package, right, in your project. It's pretty simple. You just have to come here to the terminal and uh, execute this command npm install.env. Okay. So when you do this, oh, actually, it, will, it, it is already in my dev dependencies. So you can see that this.env is over here with this given version that I have right now. Okay. And if I open again the parameters, you're going to see that I needed to create an env, that, uh, that env file. You can see it in the root of my project here as well. Okay. That env. And I created here an environment variable named <laughs> env var. Okay. And the value of this env var is me from that env. Okay. I want to dif differentiate the value that I created before, right? Var, it's equal to me. But now it is me from that env, just to make sure that I'm getting the value from the, the that env file. Okay. Beautiful. What is the next step? It's pretty simple. Um, we have to add a couple of configurations in our playwright.config.js, okay? So the first one is to import .env from the .env uh, package that we just installed. Then we have to like call this configuration .env.config. This is like a, a very basic configuration that we need to add in the playwright.config.js based on the documentation, right? And then here in our projects configuration, I created this beautiful new env var under or actually after the user. Okay. As you can see, this env var is going to have the, the same like kind of syntax that I just showed you before process dot env dot env var because that's the value that I have in the dot env file over here. <laughs> I know it's kind of tricky, but I think you get the idea, right? So now when I just when I just call this env underscore var, it is gonna get the value from the file dot env with the value with the well with this variable env var, and I'm gonna be accessing this particular value over here me from dot env. It's kind of tricky, but I think that you get the idea. This is how you can manage to get environment variables is stored in this that env variable and how you can configure the project to read it as a variable like this one. Okay. So I'm going to get back to parameters.spec.js. And as you can see, I'm getting again, the test information variable at the beginning of my test, just to make sure that I can access the project configuration and I'll be getting project that use that env var, because that's the name that I created here in the project configuration project use and env bar. So I'm getting the value from the .env file that I have here with, which is me from 
that m. That's the value that I'm trying to get access to, right? So uh, I'm assigning this value to the user constant, okay? And then I'm, I'll, I'll be doing the same kind of actions and assertion that I just showed you before, right? So I'm gonna open here again, um, let me show you this. I'm gonna open the, the test runner in Playwright, okay? And I'm gonna show you that this is working perfectly fine, okay? So I'm gonna run testing using that env files. This is the test that I wanted to show you, okay? This is it. And you can see that it is working in Chromium, me from that env, and it is working in Firefox as well because I have the same configuration for both projects, var here and var in the second project. So guys, I hope that you love how this works. I hope that you enjoy how I explain it. Please let me know your feedback if you have any question and I'll try to leave the repository as well in the description of this video. Please subscribe and let me know if you like the video. Just hitting the like button is gonna help me a lot. See you in the next one, masters.